more interested and also welcome to people like you and to Brazilians. Because most of the Brazilians who do not live here, who come from outside of the favela, they are very prejudiced about places like this. They don't want to show the bad side of Rio to you. That's why when people from here see you are in here, they see that you give more value to us than Brazilian people. So as I said, Rocin is the biggest favela in Rio de Janeiro and also the most developed. Over 300,000 people live here, but the government says almost 7,000 people live inside of the community. I have my only reason to say that we have over 200,000 people live here. And most of these little streets that we have inside of the community were built by the locals, I mean by favela people. And in here we have over 500 unofficial streets. So you all know the community wants to live here. We have this one at the top, it's more for people who live at the top of the community. We have another 24 hours clinic that's located in the middle, that's more for everybody. And we have another one down below. So we have three hospital clinics for everybody. Okay. Outside of the community, we also have like public hospitals, but more for people who come from the other favelas. As I said, some favelas do not have a hospital. That's why they need to go to these hospitals outside of the community. Here in the favela, we have approximately like six public schools, but most of the locals go to school outside of the community. Because as I said about the population, six schools for 7,000 people. And six schools for 7,000 people is not enough. When I went to the high school, I went outside of the community. And also here in Brazil, we have to like two different shifts. We have like, like for the school. We have the morning shift that's from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the afternoon shift that's from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And also the favela kids who go to school, they can get the free pass on the bus. Here in favela have two banks. Two of these three banks are public and one is private. You know? And also here in Favela have rules, and that's why I have banks. People don't steal inside of the community. If you steal inside of the community, you get punished. As we know these rules, we don't rob the banks. And also all the money that are in the bank, they are from Favela people. So if you take from the bank, you are taking from Favela people. Here in Favela we also have five internet companies. Yeah, some people get it like... Impressive, like shocked when I say you have five internet companies, you know. So these five internet companies were all set by the locals. The main playground that was built by the government for a lot of people, as you guys can see, was built outside of the community because if the government wanted to build the sport complex in here. They would have to demolish a lot of properties. And we have another rule that if the government takes our property, they need to give an, another one back. Yeah. So imagine if they need to move 300,000 people, remove 1,000 favelas. It will cost a lot of money. Yeah. That's why they kind of leave yeah. the favelas where they are. Yeah. They don't want to have problems, yeah. you know. But actually, the drug dealers that were here before, like my opinion, they were good for the community. Yeah. And one of the rules that was imposed by them that people couldn't go down here to steal from rich people because steal from rich people is called for the police to inside of the community yes. and the police inside of the community is not good for the drug dealers yes. mm -hmm. they need to move, they're moving, they're kind of losing money because they need to hide from the police mm -hmm. so we kind of had this mutual contract mm -hmm. the American high school provides education mm -hmm. and next thing we do not go down there to steal from them as you can see the favela is surrounded by rich people and not to think rich people take drugs. In my opinion, they do more than poor people. But the social media needs to blame someone. Guess who they blame? Most of the drugs that these people take come from a place like this, you know? And the drug that's sold in here, like, it's not good enough to make the drug dealers rich. The drug that's sold in here, it costs between five and 30 reais. For people who live outside, one gram of cocaine, it costs over 100. So tell me who's for the drug business. People who live here or people who live outside. And the persecution for local people is very, like there are good and bad points about persecution for local people. The good points about the persecution for people who live here is that now the government is investing money into the community. Talking about transportation, I mean like the subway stop by the other side of the community, yeah. you benefit a lot of people who live yeah. here. And also, we were fighting to change the name of the station. Mm -hmm. 
the only yeah. person who has, they didn't mention her scene. So now people here get motivated to have some education. The part of education, when most of these kids came back from, when they were coming back from the school, they did not have a place to go. Mm. Imagine a thousand kids hanging around on the streets and they're kind of looking up to the drug traffickers. Yeah. Because the drug traffickers here, yeah, they make kids money. And now the kids are getting motivated yeah. because if they want to go to the library or go to this part of the complex, they need to go to school. And also in the library, they can have like free internet access, they can watch movies, they can read a book, you know. And also down here, we have a university called PUC. Okay. Now it's one of the most expensive in the Rio. And now favela kids are getting multi, like getting scholarships oh, to study yeah. there. Yeah, that 10 years ago, yeah. I never thought, okay, I'm going to study in Puki. Yeah. But now, I know a lot of people from here that are going to yeah, PUC. Nice. That's why they prefer to party in here. 